So, first of all, welcome everybody to our live stream. And today, it, the topic is about training the style I. So, if you have any question or comments, please uh, write in capital letter question or comment, and please stay in the topic of training the style I. So, if you're wondering what is it actually training your style I, and what is the style I, <laughs> Marianne is talking about this, but I don't understand. <laughs> So the style I is really um, how you, um, you, view, you view style. If you have a, a good style I, you can tell if an outfit works. Uh, you can easily create outfits. Um, you can tell, okay, this go with this. This may not go with that. And training it means to be active in that in your style I. And that means to be really active every day as opposed to being passive. Uh, when you are being passive, you prefer uh, somebody to um, give you an outfit to wear or um, tells you, or somebody tells you, okay, wear this, that will suit you, as opposed to really training you, teaching you, if you like, um, how to style yourself, how to create outfit. And uh, this is what I do. This is what I do best, actually. Um, I, I am um, at my best, I think, in motivating you how to train your style I. I am at my best, I think, in motivating you to, to be active in your style, to um, discover more about your style, discover more about yourself, and uh, be more active in your closet, be more active in, um, in making notes. So please, if you have not yet, please uh, try to keep a style journal because that's one of the main ways you will train your style I by making notes, making notes every day so that you retain the information. So it's good to go back um, later on, you know, a few weeks later, a few months later, even years later and see, okay, I didn't know about that, but now look what I've discovered. It is good to discover all along your journey because we're moving all the time. Um, if we stay still, we don't just stay stagnant, but I think we go, we, we, we're in danger to, um, to go back in time, to, to have more of a, um, um, to, be, to stand apart in the world of uh, fashion, if you like. And this is when we see a lot of, you know, the generation gap in style uh, that we may see sometime. Um, so it's good to stay um, to stay active and develop, if you have not already, uh, that style of art. So develop it and train it every day. Um, we have a comment from Johnny. Um, I think it is like a muscle. Exactly. You need to find what works for you and train your eye to identify the item when you're out in the shopping jungle. Yes, yes, yes. That is very, that is perfect, Johnny. Exactly. You are so right. It is like a muscle. It is like a memory. If you don't use it, you, you, you lose it, that kind of thing. So how, in what ways can you train your style eye? So as I mentioned, a good way is to keep a style journal. Um, make notes when you are creating outfits. Make notes to start with. Just describe your outfit. Okay, I'm wearing this. I'm wearing that. And the question to us is why? So why? And the why will train your eye because you will start thinking deeply. You will start thinking about okay, what? Why does it work? Or why does it not work? Because, um, you know, I, I create outfits all the time, but uh, sometimes while in the middle of a live stream or something like that, even for video, I will, I will tell you, and I like doing that, and I think people like that as well, is when I try to create an outfit, let's say, okay, I'm wearing this white T-shirt or this shirt, let's see, or it, what about this? Let's see if it works. Because sometimes we think things may work, but it's when, you know, we put a hanger here next to a face. Oh, which is trousers are going to go well. And then we put it on. Mm, it's not quite right. So this is good when actually it's not quite right because it makes us ask why. Because the question why is very important. Why doesn't it work? Okay, it could be because the trousers goes out to a bit too high and maybe it makes you too short-waisted. It could be that the color contrast is too too stark or not enough of a contrast or uh, maybe the shoes are not 
I'm not making the outfit pop. Let's not forget uh, that, well, to me anyway, uh, shoes are so important. To me, they are much more than accessory. And they are, to me, the accessory, if we're going to go footwear accessories, they are the accessories that make and they have the most impact on the outfit. Where the wrong shoes and your outfit will flop. But where the, you know, you can find some pair of shoes that actually make the outfit pop. And that makes you go, wow. For instance, a kind of a, a dress in a, in a Dior style from the, um, the 50s, for instance. Um, you know, you, you have that hourglass shape. You wear a pair of Birkenstock. The dress is not going to go wow. But suddenly you put some high heels, some escarpins, you know, the, the pumps. Um, and your your dress, and the dress is going to go, ooh, look a bit like Cinderella, you know, ooh, when she wears the, the new dress for the ball. Because suddenly she's not wearing flats. And, you know, she she um carries herself differently and that's that's why suddenly the dress is is almost alive and um it's also thanks to the shoes so you have this transformation um from the um from the chenille the caterpillar if you like into the butterfly so shoes have are not even important they're vital um, so this is why by training your style eye, you will you will make these comments in your um, in your style journal. Because if you don't take note or wherever you want on your phone or on your computer, because if you don't take note, you will easily forget and um, can go back on it and again apply what you have discovered. And I am giving you always um, you know plenty of techniques because um, to me it's important to know the techniques because if I can just tell if I just you know, go on video or, or something like that and tell you okay this you can wear with that you know this piece with that piece what are you learning? Nothing. You'll be able to put those two together but what about the rest? You see? And that's the difference between the fish and um, fishing. Learning how to fish. But if I Give you the guidelines, which I do. I do in all my courses, master classes, and um, videos. Usually, I give you a lot of techniques, a lot of how tos, a lot of guidelines, um, so that you can apply. So you can actually dress yourself. And once you learn how to dress yourself, obviously, while uh, learning how to dress yourself, putting outfits together, you are training your style eye. And when your style eye is trained, you will know straight away if an outfit doesn't work. Uh, on yourself, on other people, um, and um, something important as well. Let's not forget is because I make I make videos and I show outfits, I show dresses. Um, sometimes on me, and sometimes I, I take images uh, from the brands online, and um, I get some comment that say, "But Marianne, this model you have chosen is not my size, you know, I am plus size, but this model is not plus size, you've shown me, or that model is younger, that model is thinner, that model is taller or shorter. Or something. <laughs> so it is absolutely impossible. You will find it nowhere, nowhere on this planet. Um, somebody can actually use something on a, a model that looks exactly like you, it's impossible, unless it is you. Uh, so, and this is why this, this person uh, making those comments, um, in my opinion, don't have their the style I trained. And this is something that they need. They need to train the style I so that they can even, can imagine themselves instead of the model. They can see the dress and say, okay, well, okay, this this uh, this model is younger or, um, or two or older than me or something. Okay, I'm going to put my, my thumb here in front of her face. Imagine it's me. Okay? And use the style I to imagine themselves instead of a model wearing that outfit or that dress or something you see and um because you know most of the time whatever we see does not correspond um for our style maybe we are from a, you know we are we have a different style maybe um you know the um, the cut is not right for us, too short, too wide, uh, or something like that. We don't know those florals, or we don't like this um, this print, or the shades are not our shades. So, of course, 
very often something that's shown to us would not go for would, would not apply to us. But this is why we need to have a, a trained style eye, so we are able to make the changes, so that you know this outfit could suit us and make us look beautiful and could flatter us. So this is why we see and feel so, okay. So it may not be hundred percent for me yet, but how can I change it? Which changes can I make to this outfit so that? You know, I could wear it. Maybe the um, instead of the turtleneck, I'd a better V-neck or a crew neck or a square neck. Or maybe it's the it's a sleeve. Maybe you know, um, no, I don't suit long sleeve. It maybe three quarter sleeves or something. You know, it's sometimes it's little changes. Maybe with a wide belt it would look better for me, or a thinner belt, or maybe it's a um, crop trouser or longer trousers. Maybe it's wide leg. Maybe I look better in a straight leg. You see? Um, and once you, you have trained a style, you get used to, to doing that. That, that. I call it an exercise. To doing that exercise, because this is how you learn. So how can I change? Which changes can I make to this outfit so that you know it can be uh, flattering for me? So what do you think of this? Do you have any questions? And um, I would like to ask you a question. How can you try your style eye? Because I have a few ways, but maybe you, you have other ideas. That would be interesting. So make you work a little bit when I drink my tea. I'm lucky. <laughs> So we have a question here from Susan. Uh, that was by email earlier today. How do I know when I get it right? I try, but I still can't tell. I end up second guessing myself. That's a fantastic question. The thing is, in the beginning, you may not get it right. But little by little, because you can't escape, you, you have to make, uh, you will make uh, mistakes. And even us stylists, we do make mistakes. And um, but you will progress. And this is why I think the best thing, uh, and I will again and again and again say it: have a style journal, uh, Susan. If you don't have one already, you know I have some on sale on Amazon. Various styles. I give you uh, some quotes so you can ponder again. You know some quotes. Sometimes I make you think, and they are. They make you think further than just a few words. They make you think deeper into the style. Um, and uh, ask yourself a question. What if, what if I put this with that? Put it on. And again, look at yourself in the mirror. Step a few um, steps back. And have a look at the whole, um, your whole body with that. If you find, you find it difficult to... Maybe compare outfits, then take pictures on your iPhone, you know, some kind of selfies, so that you can flip, or maybe you can all put them all on your on your screen, maybe. And then you can compare, okay, oh, I look better in that, I think. Uh, because you can take more time, maybe. And um, But you have also be careful of where you, how you take the picture. If you take the picture in the middle of your body, your middle might look a little bit bigger. So have a look where you're going to take the picture from. Um, and uh, you will see, um, you, by comparison, the before and the after, or making changes in this outfit, or that outfit, maybe by, by changing the shoes. Making heels usually improve, improves an outfit, especially dresses and skirts, uh, showing a bit more of your leg. Um, the um, changing um, a top, or changing a skirt with a top, or adding a belt, adding um, a jacket, adding a blazer, um, that kind of thing. You know, sometimes different changes, and then you can take, again, take the pictures and see which one is the best. And you can ask your friend or, you know, relatives, what do you think of this, you know, what do you think of me in this, or that one? Um, what would be good also is if you could find 
uh, a boutique, a shop or something where you know those sales ladies are very good, are worth their salt, not just uh, saying, oh, yes, you're fantastic just for the commission. Because if they are genuine, they will tell you, um, they would probably not tell you, oh, no, you, you don't look good in that. But um, they will tell you um, in the most subtle way, oh, try this, you would look, I think that would be more you or something. And uh, if you, you know, if they can give you some good advice, then ask them question. You know, why do you think that suits me more than this? Um, how would you wear, if you buy something, ask them, how would I wear this with? And they will tell you, oh, that would look really good with these trousers, really good with this skirt. Um, under jacket, under blazer, you can wear it like this. When you buy something, it's good to ask that um, because they, they know. I mean, you know, they are in a fashion thing every day and they know how to put things together, especially the, the new fashion, the new trends, you may not know. Um, I do that all the time. And here in France, they, they really um, um, give you advice. They really advise you well because they're, they're not on commission in France. They pay you salaries. They're not on commission. So you are able to trust the, the judgment more. So this is, you know, a few ways to help you, Susan. So I hope that was helpful. Um, but um, see how you get on and let us know. Uh, we have a comment from Sandra. Sandra says, I always add a foundation of basics. Uh, it is a game changer since I love accessories. Thank you for giving me insight. Oh, you are welcome, Sandra. And Sandra, again, is right. Um, having a, um, the main pieces as basics are really good. You know, if those basics really uh, flatter you, then you can rely on them and you can add here and there a few trendy pieces. Really, really good. Um, a comment from JM. I want to wear more dresses and I'm thinking of sundresses when the times go up to 110F. Uh, that's very hot. But I'm 76, pretty good shape. But wonder if I'm too old to have my shoulders and arm visible for my age. Um, again, that's a very good opportunity to train your style eye. But in my view, you know, even at 76, you can still show your, your shoulders and your arms. Uh, but I am giving you, you know, the board, I'm putting the board into your court. Try things on. How do they look on you? Do you feel comfortable? Do you feel comfortable in showing your shoulders and uh, your arms? Um, try, try something, um, you know, try those dresses. Try the dresses, different style. Um, because they're very style of sleeves. If you wanted just a little sleeve here, sleeve here uh, or the of the shoulders, which are very trendy. Um, but showing a back or the shoulders is something I think all women of all ages can show. So that was a very good, um, a very good comment, Jim. I, I hope I'm uh, helping you. Please let me know if that's helpful. A comment from Kimberly. I uh, discovered, thanks to your advice, thank you, that three-quarter length sleeves look wonderful on me. I am short and short-waisted. This was a game changer for me. Well, again, you know, that's fantastic. Thank you very much, Kimberly, for thanking me. I thank you in return. And again, you know, that shows how by trying things out, by, by uh, hearing a, a guideline, listening to somebody's advice, um, in this case, it was me, and trying it for you. You see, you've discovered, oh my gosh, this works really well, and it's a game changer. And that is, that is fantastic, because I know that many, uh, unfortunately, many women who, who watch uh, style videos, um, it's a bit like many people who watch uh, cooking videos, but don't cook at home. You see, when watching a video, be, be more active, make notes. Because you're getting advice, you're getting guidelines, you're getting tricks. And uh, many times, if we don't, if we're not active in that, we, we don't make notes, we forget. Um, but sometimes you're getting real gems uh, of advice in, uh, in videos. It can be from a magazine or even a, a movie or something. You know? um, Comments from Sandra. I've had to retrain my eye because I am 65 now. I was so confused until I stopped looking at trends and focused on classic pieces. Very good. I had to change my hair and makeup too. Yes, again, that's another way to 
um, to stay in style, but not in fashion, um, and following what is good on you. Because sometimes being too, um, having only classic pieces can be a little bit aging, and it's good sometimes to add a little piece of, um, uh, of trendy piece, not overly trendy that looks really like uh, July 2023, but um, something that, that refreshes, if you like, the, uh, the classic. But having, for instance, um, and using the 80 20 principle with 80% basics, 20% trendy, uh, it's usually what uh, we French women uh, do. So that's a really good, Sandra, and you have done the right thing. You've had to retrain your eye, and you've changed your makeup, and you've tried your change your hair. Very, very good. Comment for Montpetson, or Montpen Montpenson. Uh, sorry if I don't know how to pronounce uh, your name. Um, question, I get lost when knowing how to accessorize scarves and jewelry. Um, is it too little, too much? How to know what accessories? Well, the, the way we French women do is usually, um, and again, I'm going to give you three, the three pillars of French chic. I uh, call that term for that. So the three pillars of French chic are, and they are, they can never get you wrong. Follow them, and we follow them in France. They cannot get you wrong, okay? So keep it simple. So when you know when you want to, to um, buy a piece or when you want to create an outfit, think of these three principles. The first one, keep it simple. Okay. So if you don't want to put a foot wrong, you follow that. Keep it simple. So your outfit has to be simple, but each piece also has to be simple. Um, less is more. So in the case of jewelry, fewer pieces have a more of an impact. For instance, I mean, you know me, I am not big in jewelry, um, meaning, you know, my jewelry um, in terms of accessories are always on the minimal um, size in style, for instance, or in size, but also not many pieces of jewelry. Um, the only one I've got that's really big, if you like, is this one. So I would not wear, for instance, this and uh, other pearl necklaces. That would be too much. But if I wore some pearl um, necklaces here, I would not wear that. So it's one or the other. And if you have a pearl, a bit like a Chanel, that's fine. But something minimal at the ears. Uh, usually I wear, um, my night times of 10, I wear my pearl studs. And that's about it usually. I wear usually my wedding engagement ring. But not many, not much more maybe ring here. Uh, I'm wearing this one now. But you know, nothing much more, but it depends on, on your style. Um, and the same with scarves. So scarves is very good for bringing color to your face. And you can try that again, you know, by training your eye. You you can wear, for instance, something a little bit too dark. Let's say you, you're having a, something that's really too dark for you to start. Maybe it's in a gray or a black or um, a navy blue, a dark brown, you think it's a bit, mm, or camel, for instance. Um, I think it needs something. So, but you can still wear that piece if you wear a scarf, a scarf with with colors, you know, that really suit you, for instance, in right shade. Then you can wear the clothes in the other color because you have that is, is in between and that wrinkle to your face. And um, you can change, you can try various scarves in front of your mirror again and see which one has a, oh, but you will see straight away. You know, you can try a few scarves. Don't even have to knot them. Just put them there. Or sometimes some are... Mm -hmm. So if they are, if you feel like this, mm -hmm, don't don't wear them. Um, but if they are, you know, if you're in a shop, for instance, and you try various, you have to stop at the wow. When you put one here, so, wow. Okay. This reaction is usually the right one. <laughs> so I hope um, it was helpful, Mokbetson. Please let me know. Um... So a question from Ify. I would like to know two or three basic details that help us to train our style eye. So making notes. That's the big one. Making notes, writing things down on a style journal or wherever you, you want. Being active. Being active in 
in your style, but also in a style that happens around you. Looking at people at um, uh, outfits, an outfit you like, for instance. How? Why do I like this outfit? How did she put things together? Um, looking at, you know, watching style videos. Um, there's plenty of outfits there. Have a look even on Instagram. You know, there's uh, plenty of influencers with the various showing the outfits of the day. Um, going on the um, on the top brands, for instance, they're really showing some good outfits put together. Or it could be a brand that you really like that usually creates some good outfits. Uh, so, and um, and being active in your style, really look at really look at your body. You know, what body shape do I have? How do I dress my my body shape? Because if you're an apple, you're not going to um, dress like a pear or an inverted triangle or an hourglass or a rectangle. So you need to know your um, your body shape and how to dress for it. Uh, you um, so being active, um, being active when you when you shop, being active um, when you look at people and ask yourself a question: How do they put this together? What does it work, or why doesn't it work? It's not a matter of criticizing people's outfit or your outfit, uh, but more of a critique with with the style eye. So I hope that was helpful for you. Um, there's something I just remembered. I didn't finish the three pillars of friendship. <laughs> I told you, sorry about that. I must have uh, gone on a tangent. So um, keep it simple, less is more, and quality, not quantity. Okay, three pillars of friendship. When you follow them, you can't go far wrong in your outfit. Let me know what you think of them. So I hope that is helpful for you. If we um, a comment from Yvette, explore different styles, experiment exactly, learn the basics, fit proportion, fit color, mix and match different pieces, play with patterns and textures. It's a science, not easy. Yvette, that is perfect. That is so many ways to do it exactly. To um, and it's also to to try things. You know some. Many people may be shy about trying new things, um, but I'm always here to motivate you to push the envelope a bit because when you push the envelope, when you get outside your comfort zone, you know, you will be lucky. And we're not even say you may be, but you will. Uh, you will have some, some, um, some experiences, if you like, whereby you create an outfit that is such a wow for you. And you probably tell yourself, oh, but why did I do it before? Why did I put those two pieces together? <laughs> so it's good sometimes to push the envelope a little bit. Try, you know, some pieces you don't wear with other pieces usually. Okay? So this is good to spend time in your closet with the pieces you already have before going out shopping. Because if you're not, if you don't know already what you have in your closet, if you are not already pairing, making pairings that... Um, that you have not done before, um, you may make the wrong choices in, in your purchases. So that is very, very good, Yvette. And it's, it's true. You're so right. It's science. It's, it's not easy. It's not easy. But again, you know, if you make it into a habit, you will, um, it will happen. It will happen for you. Mm. Another comment from Shelley is very good. Taking full-length selfies really helped me to see things I've been missing. I lack confidence and dislike a lot of the styles online, hoping for a better way to dress myself with confidence. Well, that's a very good idea. So, oh, sorry. Um, one of the things I was mentioning before, it is good to take a selfie because you can compare various outfits that you have. Um, I don't have it here, but um, I do that when I um, prepare a video where I show you, let's say, three or five outfits. I try the outfits before, I take a selfie um, in order to remind myself what was the, the outfit about, and I can you know, put every piece uh, together, but I also I can compare, and I keep them on my phone, and sometimes I say, okay, when I wear to the me as well, so what can I wear? And I go through the pictures I've taken, so, ooh, I'm going to wear this. So I recreate this outfit, because we do forget, we do forget. Um, and as you lack confidence, Shelley, 
um, it is good also to try new things. And try new things if you are not confident maybe in trying new styles or things that are too trendy. Maybe try new pairings with what you already have. So I think we call that a shopping your closet. And um, you may be surprised and create some really nice outfits. You may not have thought before. And then be comfortable with wearing those outfits in the home, for instance, before you feel confident enough to, um, to go outside with them. Very good. I hope that was helpful for you, Yvette. No, Shelly, sorry. Excuse me. Um, from Denise. Denise is speaking my language. Invest in a full-length mirror. Yes, 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 yes. Um, and I mentioned that in my first book, How to be Chic and Elegant. Um, a full-length mirror is your best friend. Not just, I always say, um, not, you know, looking at yourself in the bathroom mirror with just, you know, that size of 30 centimeters by 20. <laughs> you know, you're trying to look at yourself like, oh, how do you look? And you look down, oh, yes, my skirt is there. Okay. <laughs> That's not going to do. That is not uh, going to cut the mustard, as I like to say. No, a full-length mirror. A full-length mirror is your best friend um, because you can see. You need to see your, out, your whole outfit um, and your shoes. And you need to see your face because, you know, so you can tell if the color next to your face um, suits you. You need to see your shoes as well. Uh, so step back. You need to step back away so you can really have a good long look. Because when it's too close, it's not like a, you can't see well enough. You need to step back so you can see the whole, uh, the whole outfit, the whole you. Uh, because the outfit is not a part away from you. The outfit is a part of you because you're wearing it. So you need to see you. <laughs> and take that selfie. Wonderful. Um, Barbara, my style eyes, my 13-year-old 13 13 year nephew, he always gets the little tweaks right. <laughs> That's wonderful. It's good to have those nephews. That, oh, yes, oh, nay. Yeah, oh, nay. That's really good, Barbara. Um... I have a question from 3P Soup. Do you ever wear more than three colors? If so, could you give an example? Actually, that's a good exercise. Because in France, we tend to do we, we um, less is more again. We're following that example. And um, usually is monochromatic or two colors with an accent. Usually not more than three. You can do this exercise yourself because I've seen it sometime when it's, you know, when it's over three colors. Um, so I'm not going to tell you what I think about that because I'm uh, sending the ball to your court and I'm, I'm going to ask you to do this exercise. And maybe all of you can do that if you're um, interested in that. I think it's a very interesting uh, uh, question. Um so three piece soup, uh, three piece soup. Excuse me. Um, you put an outfit of two colors only, and take a selfie. You put an outfit, let's say, you know, three colors or two colors, and um, an extra one as a pop of color, for instance. Take a picture, and then make up an outfit of about four or five colors. You don't even have to go that far. Uh, and take a selfie. And now you can compare, put them on your screen and compare those outfits. And you, I'm sure you don't even have to ask yourself, but you ask yourself, okay, what is the most chic or elegant looking? Okay? And come back to me with the answer. You will know. Um, it's a very good, very good question. I love that. Uh, a question from uh, that's it. I have auburn hair. Gray washes me out. Is brown a good alternative for classic classic pieces? Well, again, this is a good, um, a very good question for a very good exercise. Again, that's going to to help you to change your style line. Because anyway, that's that's the way I teach colors. So you you, know, you put the color of the piece that uh, you wish to wear, okay? So go in front of a mirror, but you need um, the natural light because, you know, various uh, lights can be a little bit yellow or something, and it's, 
it may give you a wrong answer. And the, you will see if your um, the color would pop. I know for me, red pops. Uh, for instance, camel will not pop as much, so it's better when I wear, if I'm a camel that I have a scarf, for instance. Um, so you will the color of the shade really that's what it is a shade that suits you should be a whoa it's a pop you should feel or you should look and by looking you would feel um you should look really wide awake as if you come back from a holiday but if you wear things uh shades that don't suit you um you may look tired you may look um kind of a pale or you can um, have some dark, even some, you know, dark under the eyes um, because of the um, kind of a shadow. Uh, your face may look you know, either too pale or yellow. Uh, you know, things change. It's, it is, um, and it makes a really big difference on our outfit and you. So try it. And that's a very good example because for me, um, I don't know you, I, I can't see you, um, I don't know your, I, I can't see your face, even online it's a bit difficult. So it's something, it's, to me, I've always believed that it is um, an exercise to be done by the person um, because you can see yourself. Okay, so let me know if you are able to do this, um, this color test, I, I call it, and uh, I've made, I've, I've made um, at least a couple of videos um, that include a color test that you can probably find on my um, YouTube channel. So I hope that was helpful. You may think, but Marianne is giving giving us some uh, some homework, some exercises. What is that about? <laughs> it's homework. I love it. So um, it, it's about being active and not passive. You see. Uh, from Elizabeth, like anything else, it takes practice. Yes, I have not done it, but I'm thinking about when I have an outfit, I really love taking a picture of it. Well, that is, again, that is a great thing to do. So when you've done that, you know, come back to us and let us know how you, um, you know, how you, you're keeping, how you are, you know, how your eye is getting trained. And again, make notes, make notes, make notes. I can't say it enough. Make notes. <laughs> um, yes, that's a good idea. Also, it's you know when you have a um, your outfit, you're taking picture, and if you want to share your chic, you know send me maybe a photo, and uh, if you agree, you can appear in one of my videos by sharing your chic. Um, a question from Kimi. I've been suffering from alopecia. Uh, for the last few years, how can I add on accessories that help cover my hair in a fashionable way? It, it is a problem that um, many women have. Um, and myself, I don't have a PCR, but I've lost a lot of hair as well after the death of my both my parents last year. Um, so I really... Um, you know, um, I really appreciate your comment and I really... Um, have a lot of empathy with what you're going through with a P-Shop because it's really not um, something easy to, to go through as women. Um, so one other thing to do is um, maybe try some, some scarves, some uh, hats, uh, maybe go to, um, to a hat shop and ask them, you know, what is the trend in hats at the moment? Um, it, it is, it is, um, it is difficult. Um, but I don't, I don't know. I don't know if you have already done it. But um, what about going to your hairdressers so she can give you a cut that that may hide a little bit of the um, the loss of hair? Because um, I've done that with my hairdresser you know she can she could tell so she draws she does it um you know in a special way and some areas some areas they always show around around here <laughs> i don't have much hair around here um but she tries what she can you know to um to make it into a cut so that some part of the loss of hair doesn't um does not show up too much um 
otherwise um, it depends also where it is um, at the moment what is something that is um, that is trendy is the the foulard like a, a scarf or a band if you like that is that goes in front of the hair so if for instance the some other pictures in the front that could help um, yes but you see that's it um, um, yes and the only thing I can um, I can give you some words of uh, encouragement um, not to give up and um, be brave and um, try to to get some advice from um, people in the know like hairdresser uh, people who sell scarf people who uh, sell hats and people who sell scarves as well they can give you some ideas on how to tie them um, in new ways So I hope that was helpful, Kimi. Um, a comment from Johnny. I think one of the biggest traps is loving the style, but the quality is not there. Learning to say no to impulse buys and things that don't work. Well, again, that's a very good comment, Johnny. Um, many of us shop online and sometimes it can be difficult to see the, the quality because the picture looks very good and you're getting it and uh, what's that, you know? Um, but I think we are we are, we are learning now to to shop better. Um, I have a saying I like to to mention is um, buy less, buy better, and uh, I think many brands now are making more of an effort to give us better quality clothing and um, with better fabric uh, and you know a little bit more better quality. So. It may be um, a choice for us to spend a little bit more in order to have better quality clothes. But um, we all know that the quality of the clothes that used to, to be decades ago, like in the 50s, 60s, it's not gonna, we're not gonna have that again, I don't think. But it's very good. Again, it's a, it's a way of uh, training your style eye and being able to, to walk away uh, and say, no. Very good, Johnny. Thank you for your lovely comment. Um, a comment from Betsy. When I look in my closet, it helps me. It helps me know how to get out of the rut. Well, that's that is very good. And again, you are training your style. Ah, you're already doing it. You're living it. Um, you are because you are shopping your closet and um, it's such a good way. And sometimes, you know, we, we may think how many, how many of us have, have said, I've got nothing to wear. Um, so on the times that you think you have nothing to wear, that's an opportunity for you not to go back to your, um, to the things that you usually wear, but it's the opportunity for you to try something new. Pick something that you don't usually wear, for instance. I think, okay, I've not worn this one much. I still like it, I still love it, yes. But maybe you're not wearing it because you don't know how to wear it, or maybe it's a little bit too smart or something. But it's an opportunity to, to, to look smart today, for instance, and try different pairing. Because if on those days when you think, I've got nothing to wear, and you wear again the same thing, that's not going to make you feel, wow, that's not make you feel better for it. You're going to think, oh, same old, same old. So on those days when you don't know what to wear, try something new. And again, that will train your style right? and make notes. Um, the comment from Denise, I write complete outfits down and index cards. That's very good in a clear recipe box on my desk. Jewelry, shoes, horse, scarves. That... Again, when you're doing it, you, you're not keeping uh, a note on a journal, but that's the next best thing. You have those, oh, it's just as good on the card. And one card, a recipe, or one card, an outfit described like that. That's very good. Very, very good indeed. Thank you for the idea. I love that. Um, a comment from Sandra. When looking in the mirror, turn and look at yourself on the side and using a hand mirror, look at the rear view mirror. Yes, um, that's a good idea to look from all angles. 
Um, I don't know if you've seen a video of mine recently when I was mentioning those crunch leggings. See, I think it was crunch butt leggings. Oh! Um, there was a funny face of me like, oh! and um, so yes, look around for more angles. Um, very good, very good. Because sometimes we say, oh yes, that's nice, but sometimes the dress, a dress or a top can, or sometimes a jacket, you know, with the, the, the pleat at the back and not look right. So it's very good to look in all, from all sides. Very good comment, Sandra. Another comment from Denise. A dry erase board can help you keep track of what you wear each day. Oh, that's a good idea to train a stellar eye as well. And, um, you know, when you make notes or so, you can make notes with a date. Today I wore, you know, such and such outfit. So you you describe it and the next day you do the same. And afterwards, you say, okay, what did I wear that? Did I wear that again? And you say, okay, I can wear it again because I wore it a couple of weeks ago. Or, uh, oh, I haven't worn this one for a long time or something like that. Very good. I like those ideas. Um, a comment from Janelle, plus size women aren't supposed to wear bright colors. Oh, you can wear bright colors, but black and gray wash me out even more. So now with my hair, mostly white. You can still wear bright colors as long as those colors suit your skin tone. Uh, for instance, uh, you know, many blonde uh, women, blue eyes or um, pale skin, if they, they may not be able to wear red, for instance, um, a dark red like this one. Um, but they can wear, you know, more subtle colors. So you need to find the shades that, that suit you. Uh, again, try in the mirror, try in the natural light, uh, take notes, take selfies. Um, and sometimes, you know, something very good as well that happens. We go out and somebody tells me, oh, you look so great in that, you look great in that. That's an opportunity for you to take note. What was I wearing that day? And also, also a good opportunity to ask that person who was nice enough to make a comment, to ask her, what exactly is it that made you say, wow, is it the color? Is it the shape of the outfit? Um, you know, what is it exactly? So that you can make notes, so that you can recreate uh, either the outfit or wear again that kind of shade or wear again that style of clothes. Very good. Uh, Sandra, a comment from Sandra. I lost a lot of hair from COVID. <sighs> Never grew back, especially in the front. I ran my head just circuit it short. It's hard to accept the loss. It, it's, again, it is. You know, our hair as women is so important to us. Um, and when it falls, it um, can affect us. And this is why to, to help us, we need to work on our self-confidence. And maybe the style can help us to, um, to, to live with the alopecia, loss of hair. Uh, I've had many comments over the years for my hair. Oh, do something about your hair, Marianne. Your hair doesn't look good. Uh, and... You know, I never say I've never said anything for about my hair for quite a long time. Uh, but two or three years ago, I decided, okay, I've had enough. I'm going to say something, you know, because um, you know it's, it is difficult. Um, and when you have a full head of hair, really thick, and I, I know some women have got absolutely beautiful hair, uh, some kind of hair, some of us women, you know, thin hair or alopecia, loss of hair cannot have. So we need to make the most, most of it, whatever we can. And we always try our best. Um, and um, But by um, working on our style and redirect, redirecting, if you like, the, the attention to our outfit, that may be a way that we can gain our confidence. So I hope that, that uh, helps you, Sa Sandra, or Sandria, sorry. Um, but, you know, I, I really um, respect you and admire um, ladies like yourselves um, who come here and mention that because uh, it, can be, it can be difficult to mention. A comment from Catherine, I'm dreadful for looking at the inside of garments to see how they finished. Haven't yet been chased after John Lewis yet. Do not feel dreadful whatsoever, because I do that when I go in shops, and many people do that. And you will see in French shops, 
French women do that. Um, so this is the way to do it. You know, you look inside the sleeves, how is the, the lining, you look inside the clothes, you, you have a look at the buttons, um, look at the neckline, look at this, look at that. And um, I don't think anybody from John Lewis will uh, chase you out. And um, if they chase you out, please let me know. And tell them that um, you're going to send Marianne over. <laughs> I'll have a word with them. No, that's very good because, you know, that um, you are, you have, um, I mean, you are making a big decision to buy uh, one of the pieces. So you need to make an informed decision. So it's good to look the piece in, um, you know, inside and out to see if it's uh, well made. And then you make an um, informed decision on to whether or not you buy it. Very good. Uh, a comment from Very Essential. Uh, I remember I used to buy hundreds of things in thrift shops because it was cheap. I hardly ever put them on. I was a hoarder and never had a capsule wardrobe. Now I am learning. Now I am learning. Well, that is that is really good. That's wonderful to hear. And as you are changing, um, you will learn what suits you, what flatters you. So you are training your style eye, and you you will discover that really you don't need, you know, lots and lots of of clothes because a capsule. It's not just ten pieces. A capsule, uh, and it actually it varies for different people. You are able to to be even better dressed, and you are able to make uh, to create outfits that um, in an easier way. And you will end up knowing each piece very well. You end up knowing what flatters you, how things you can put things together. So it's always better to have fewer clothes, but um, that will help you better in your in your style journey. And um, so I hope you are able to train a style eye like that. It's a very good opportunity to do. It. Again, very very good comment. A question from Betsy. It's hard to let go of all the out-of-style clothes in my closet. How can I convince myself to get rid, rid of them? Um, again, I think to in order to, to declutter, um, you need to, to see, okay, do you like those clothes? Do you love them? I know I get many comments telling me, Marianne, we can tell you love your clothes. You get so excited with your clothes. So you need to be like that. When I, I love something, um, I get very excited and, um, you know, a little bit girly. Um, so if you can't, you know, let's say you pick up a um, um, handbag, a blazer, um, a shirt, anything. So then you can decide can really if you don't love it in my mind you don't even have to to put it on and try it because if you don't love it just by looking at it maybe on you um not make an improvement but you can try these th things uh if you if you are i don't know i don't know put things on put those pieces on again in front of the mirror and see do i love it does it flatter me you know all those classic questions do i love it does it suit me does it fit me um, how do I feel about it? That's important because if you put clothes that you don't like, you will not feel elated. You will not feel ee, girly because of oh, don't like that. So um, you can afterwards goodbye. You know, put them in that pile of uh, no, and keep the wow. You need to keep the wow. You need a, a wardrobe a closet that says make that makes you say wow. Um, so again, you will train your eye by doing that as well. So these are all um, very good exercise. And again, make make notes. That's a good opportunity, decluttering, to make notes. And if you don't know how to declutter, um, okay, minutes. Um, I wrote this book a few years back, The Tidy Closet, and this gives you the step-by-step -step how to give you various exercises to do. So The Tidy Closet, tips on a Frenchman, easy steps and motivation to declutter your closet and organize your wardrobe. And with that, I um, you know, motivate you to not listen to excuses. 
Um, so that would be a very good one. Either you know, you can find it on my website or on Amazon. All the Amazons. Um, so I hope that was uh, helpful. Betsy, now Catherine, a comment. I tried a teal color in white and navy. It had an amazing impact on my appearance. My skin looked happy and more youthful. I love that. My skin looked happy and more youthful. I love it. I love navy above and beyond everything. Well, that is marvelous. So not only you are learning which shade suit you, but you are training your style eye with it at the same time. And you are discovering that, you know, you've got the, wow, you've got the, um, you know, your skin looked happy and more youthful. I couldn't have said it myself better. Fantastic. I love that comment, Catherine. Thank you. Um, a question from Cesar Mom. Hi, Marianne. I'm a big fan of your channel. Thank you very much. Due to much thinning hair, I had a band-like accessory custom made by Millinery Shop for outdoor events. Any suggestion other than hats? Um, well, that's that's another idea that I have um, never done. Yes, you can have some um, some kind of I don't even know how to uh, they call, but some hair pieces that you can add on your hair, so that and actually many actresses do that. They have a hair piece here, so the back of the hair looks uh, fuller. Uh, and that can be a very good way to, to hide alopecia or some hair loss. That's a very good, um, very good um, idea to do. Very good. Uh, comment from Holly. I let my hair grow out of its natural color about 15 years ago. Silver. However, that changed, um, opened up new colors for me. Well, exactly, because... Some shade that will suit us, you know, when we have um, a color. This is the hair color because my hair is gray, but I'm, I'm going to change maybe next year or something after my son's wedding. Um, so some shade that suit us, suit us when we had uh, a normal color. When we go gray, when we go white, these shades will change. And our skin as well will change. Uh, so we have to, again, test those shades, what suits us, what no, what used to suit us, but no longer su you know, suit us now. Uh, maybe the, the harsh colors like black, for instance, um, may no longer work, that kind of thing. So we can, we can go a little bit more um, powdery colors, more pastel colors, for instance, um, in order to avoid the harsh, harsh contrast, because that, that will be too harsh against um, a lighter complexion and lighter hair. Very good, very good, um, very good comment. Um, from Amber, hello, dear Marianne, discovered your channel a few years ago, a few weeks ago. I am already threw away three quarters of my wardrobe, Got four pants, different colors and fabrics. I started shopping my closet, lots of fun. Thanks. Again, you know, shopping your closet, that's a, such a good way to, to, to declutter for a start because you will discover some pieces that you don't want to wear anymore. And also such a good way to train a star line. Again, make notes, take photographs, um, all, all that to, to help you to train your style, a style eye, to um, to transform your style. Because, you know, I mean, I like to say that style is a journey. That's why I call it a style journey. Because us, you know, people, women, we are we are on a journey in our life. It's a life journey. And our style is, it goes along this journey as well, hopefully at the same right. So when we, when we are going along our life journey, but the style is stuck behind, this is why, this is when things don't, don't work. This is when we feel, oh, I, I don't feel, um, I've lost my confidence because I don't like the, the, my clothes make me look frumpy or um, I feel that I feel too old compared to 30 years old, even though I'm only 45, let's say, or um, I'm still wearing the same clothes that I used to in my 20s, or I'm still wearing the clothes I wore when I was working in an office. You know, when there is a, a disconnect, 
So that disconnect tells you that you need to, to do something about it. And what you need to do is a good decluttering and good audit of your wardrobe first. And then have a look and um, make notes, train your style eye, um, go, go into shops. You don't have to buy things, but actually it's better if you don't buy things in the beginning, but go into shops, try things on, have a look. What do they, what do they put in a rail with what? What are the prints that are in? Would that print, um, what would that print look like on me? Do, that, do I like it? What about the different shades? What about the shoes? Um, what do I have in my wardrobe that I, and I could wear with those new things? Um, do I have enough basics? Um, basics that are essentials. For instance, a good blazer, it's um, it's essential. It could be a basic, um, something that you can't do without. So it could be your classics. Do I have a nice pair of black trousers that can wear with anything and everything, everywhere? Do I have some good shoes? Do I have some nice sweaters? What about jackets? Are they longer? Are they shorter? Do I have something that, that I can belt to show my... my um, my figure, first of all, do you know your body shape? How can you dress with your body shape? You know, all these, so many questions. This is why, uh, no, this is the wrong one. <laughs> this is why something like that, and something like that to help you declutter. To make notes, because to make sense of it. Otherwise, if you don't take notes, it's going to be very confusing. You're going to forget half the things you've discovered. Um, you will forget what you've, what you've, um, you know, what to wear with what, what to put together. But if you take notes, then you say, okay, what, what about this? And you, you go through your past uh, entries and you say, okay, this with that. If you think you're going to forget, just take pictures or like um, some of my other viewers who um, write things on a card, for instance, take photos and then, okay, you've got those photos, you've got those outfits, okay, ready, you have these, that you can rely on in case you are oh, you too confused to to create something, uh, not too confused with I have with I have nothing to wear. That's different. <laughs> but uh, as you are starting your um, the journey, then it's good. You know, once you've discovered the disconnect, connect, then you need to start from scratch. Okay. I hope that is uh, helpful for you. Um, okay, well, no more questions here. Oh, I've got an, another comment from Angel. It's a bit like uh, accessory. It's a bit like going for an eye test when the optician starts in different lenses and asks you, Better with or without. Exactly. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Exactly that. And it's a question of, of trying things. So when you're in the shop, try things, try things. And if you want to buy some good quality, do not be afraid. Many women are afraid. They're not confident enough to go in, a, um, in an expensive boutique, high-end boutique. It's a boutique. They sell clothes. Hmm? They sell pieces of fabrics. So it's good to think of that like that so that you're no longer afraid of going in, even if they're a little bit... Never mind uh, if you think they're a little bit uh, snooty, as we say. Just have a look. Can I help you? Oh, thank you. I can, you know, I'm looking around. And then you can ask them if you can try something on. Um, but, you know, without buying, just try things on to see, okay, that is very good quality. Too late, for instance, one of the reasons could be to get you used to looking at quality. What is a quality piece, a high-end jacket? What does that look like? What does that look like, um, um, you know, a nice wool coat or something like that? And, um, and do not get pressured to buy. And uh, try, try, try new things. So, you're, you know, especially if you're not quite sure about your, your personal style, it's good to try new things so you get, um, you discover it. Uh, question from Holly. Uh, I know what colors to wear, but I have serious trouble with fitting my wacky body type. So um, I have uh, created some body shape courses, but first you need my free um, body shape course, um, which is called a Shape Up, so that 
Uh, it's completely free. It's a free course so that it will give you two ways to discover which shape you are. Uh, and we'll put the, the link here in a minute. Uh, are you are you putting it on? Or, yeah, okay. My, my helper is, is going to put the, the link to the free e-course here. And once you are, you discover which shape you are. So I work with five shapes only. Apple, inverted triangle, um, eyeglass, pear, and rectangle. Because, you know, some people tell you, oh, yeah, there are 12 shapes. Ha! Can anybody be not confused? Many people are confused. Many people are, can be confused with five body shapes. So imagine 12. So five is easier enough. And of course, you can be in between. Sometimes we change. But um, so that once, you know, because if you don't know your body shape, you cannot hope to dress for your body shape, for a, for a body shape that you don't know. So that will help you. It's here, um, free body shape course. Um, so I hope that will help you. Um, it's very interesting today. Okay, question from Michelle. Hello, Michelle. Uh, would it be okay to match a modern jean with a long sleeved line white, long sleeve line white eyelid blouse? Well, again, that's a good exercise for you, Michelle, because so you put on that, that's those pair of jeans. And the good thing about pair of jeans, jeans is that you can wear anything and everything with them. That's fantastic. I love jeans. And put on that white eyelid blouse and look from all angle. How does it look on you? Okay. I think that would look a very good match for the spring summer, but it's up to you to make that decision for you. Okay. That's a very good exercise. Again, you tell me, oh, Marianne, she gave me an exercise today. <laughs> I'll make it work. And of course, once you've made a decision, you know, send me a photo or something uh, of the outfit and let me know how you get on. So we've been live for over an hour. So um, I think that's it now. Oh, maybe there's something else. Maybe one more there. Uh, uh, another question from Joyce. Dear Marianne, is it better to tell a maid our clothes compared to getting it off the shelves since it is difficult for quality clothes nowadays? Well, again, a fantastic question. If you can find a tailor to, because let's not forget that even if we buy of the peg, we can still have them tailored to suit us better, you know, for them to fit better to us. So it's always good to have a, a seamstress who we trust and who know us. And you can try also Sumisura. I did a video with um, about them a few years ago, three or four years ago, I thought. Um, so I'm going to put their name here. Uh, Sumisura. Okay. And um, you you go through the website, you put the measurements in, and you, you can choose the fabric, you can choose the lining, the buttons. Um, so that is made for you. So that's another good idea also. Um, I don't know if there's anything else. Uh, let's see. Marianne, you inspired me to buy a pair of light tan body flats. Wow. Thank you very much <laughs> for thanking me. Um, thank you very much, Michelle. Really kind. So I hope, well, first of all, I want to thank you to being live with me. And I hope you, you enjoyed this, this topic. That, that's a very good and important topic because if you don't develop your style, I, you will not be able to make improvements in your style. So thank you very much for being live and for all these comments. And I hope you, you are enjoying the exercises I gave you. <laughs> so um, I think we have another live stream next week, the same time, the same day. So again, a big thank you. Please keep well. Train your style aisle. Make plenty of notes. I'm going to tell you again, take notes. <laughs> so um, you take care. Bye-bye.